Welcome to the Mighty Emotions Podcast. I'm your host, Giselle. I'm a certified emotions coach, and I teach you how to respond better to your emotions so you can feel better in your life. My mission is to show you how to work with your emotions to become more emotionally resilient. Your emotions are not designed to overpower you. They're designed to empower you. On this podcast, I share what our emotions are, how to understand them and work with them, and the tools you need to reclaim your power and get unstuck from emotional pain so you can find fulfillment in your life again. I'm so glad you're here. Now let's get into the episode. Hello, beautiful souls. Welcome back to another episode of the Mighty Emotions Podcast. I am your host, Giselle. I'm an emotion management coach, and I'm here to teach you how to manage your emotions so that you can feel more empowered in your life. And I've taken a little break from the podcast because I've had so much happening behind the scenes, so much coming in 2024. um, That's been a lot of strategizing and planning and really just hunkering down and focusing on uh, the projects that I'm working on for Mighty Emotions, but also my family. I have a young toddler and the clock's just changed. There's a lot, there's a lot going on. Okay. So I haven't been on the podcast in a while. I also have some guests lined up for future episodes, which will be out in 2024. So please stay subscribed. There is new coming. And thank you so much for continuing to to enjoy the podcast and follow me on Instagram at mighty underscore emotions and TikTok, same handle. Um, I just love connecting with you guys. And like I said, there's more to come. So today's episode, I want to talk about emotional ages. And I've been thinking about doing this episode for a while and I thought I'm just going to sit down and record it and dive into finding out what is your emotional age and why is this important? Why does this matter? So all of us have heard of like our chronological age. We celebrate our birthday every year. You know, happy birthday if you're listening to this on your birthday. We also have biological ages, which is the state of health that our body is in. Sometimes we aren't taking care of ourselves the way we should. And so we actually are aging ourselves physically, even though chronologically we're at a certain age, right? I think I did my wellness report uh, a couple of weeks ago, and I'm four years older physically, (laughs) probably because I had a child about three years ago. (laughs) So I'm definitely needing to focus more on my physical health and well-being so that I can align my my chronological age with my biological age, right? Or yeah, with my biological age. So if you, for example, I've seen a person who is much older, but looks a lot younger or somebody vice versa that is younger, but looks a lot older. They have a different chronological versus biological age. We also have emotional ages and emotional ages have a lot to do with our level of maturity. So when you hear a term like, oh, you're emotionally mature, uh, that's a great, you know, badge of honor. You want to know, yeah, I'm emotionally mature. And that it, essentially you're saying this person is wise. They are well-developed emotionally and mentally, uh, that they have a steady mental health, that they can look at things objectively and neutrally. And, you know, that's that's a great trait that we're all kind of aiming for. However, that can be true in one area of your life and not true in another area of your life, right? You can be emotionally mature, maybe in how you tackle challenges in your work, but be really emotionally immature in how you navigate challenges in relationships. They don't always automatically translate from one area to another. And the reason why we want to understand emotional ages is because it gives us a lot of insight and information into where we've experienced pain in our life that's gotten us stuck in that age. Our emotional age is how we view the world, how we understand the world and other people. And sometimes we can be chronologically a certain age, but be viewing the world through a a much younger lens. In my own life, I, for a very long time, was the emotional, had the emotional age of a 15 year old right? I did not see myself as capable of handling things on my own. I didn't feel like an adult when I was around other adults. I saw them as like authority figures, even though I was much closer chronologically in age to them. But because I had been stuck in this 15 year old age emotionally, that is 
that impacted how I saw the world. It impacted how I saw other people and how I responded to situations in my life, right? The way a toddler sees the world is very different, hopefully, from how a 30-year-old sees the world. And we can recognize these emotional age gaps when we see how people respond to situations. Sometimes you are looking at an adult who's throwing a literal tantrum and you're thinking, what is happening here? This is such a juvenile response to the situation. Well, that's a good indication of their emotional age, right? Maybe they stopped developing at an age of a toddler when it came to certain things, right? Maybe they always had a parent that rescued them and intervened and took care of them and did everything for them. And so they never developed the wisdom that comes when we process our emotions and we move through difficulty and challenges and we gain that emotional endurance, right? They're stuck at that emotional age. So even though chronologically they've continued to grow, they've never learned to navigate situations at a higher and higher developmental level. And that's really important because when we're looking at healing or doing anything like this, if our emotional age is really, really young, then we're going to be approaching those situations from that standpoint. And we're maybe not going to be seeing the fullness of that standpoint, right? For example, if my emotion, like I said, my emotional age was a, a 15 year old, a 15 year old has limited experience in the world. A 15 year old doesn't understand things fully. They see things very black and white. So for a very long time, I saw things as very black and white, very either or. I didn't see nuance. I didn't see context. And so even though I was reading all these self-development books and I was doing all these courses and I was doing all this work, I was doing it through the filter and through the lens of a 15 year old. I was doing it through the lens of well, if I read this book and this author said that this is this, then that's it. And, that, and and when anything would conflict with that in life, it'd really throw me through a blender. So I had to learn how to grow up emotionally, how to mature emotionally. And the way that I learned to do that was processing my emotions. The way that I learned to do that was by actually moving through the discomfort that I had felt all those years ago as a child, right? But I'd never actually learned how to resolve because I didn't have the support. I didn't have anyone to teach me. And I had needed to say, okay, how am I going to respond differently to whatever the circumstance is? Because the pattern that I had was responding like a 15 year old right? The pattern that I had was responding in this very black or white way. I'm going to avoid this. I don't want to deal with this. Instead of where I'm at now, where I'm able to say, okay, there's a bigger picture here. There's more information around me. And I had to get comfortable with my own discomfort around that. And I had to say, I don't want to continue to respond in this way right? I want my emotional age to be a closer match to my chronological age. I want to be regulated, neutral, wise, mature, whatever the words are that you want, the adjectives are to describe that. I knew that I wanted to handle things with more self-belief, self-confidence. And in order to do that, I had to first acknowledge what my emotional age was, right? And that took the work of a mentor. I was working with a mentor at the time and going through the deep work of looking at my past through a different lens. And I was able to see like, huh, that's a really childish way for me to see the situation, right? When I had a different perspective coming in and I was like, oh, you know, I was open to exploring it because I was seeing how childlike my viewpoint was for a really long time. And I didn't want it to continue to be that way. So I had to sit through the discomfort. I had to move through the discomfort of processing those emotions, the shame, the fear, the disgust, the anger, right? And I had to move through all of that. And from that, allowing my body to process that gave me this clarity and it gave me the nervous system to receive. Remember, whenever we're processing our emotions, it's going from this rigid nervous system state to this open, receptive, relaxed nervous system state. And in that state, I was able to gain new information that as a 15 year old with my limited development, I wasn't able to see. So for example, in relationships, I thought that friends, right? As a 15 year old, you're either my best friend or you're not my best friend. And you're either loyal to me or you're not loyal to me. And I can either trust you or I can't trust you. And I was putting all of my friends in these little boxes and I was struggling to maintain 
friendships, right? I would cut people off after the slightest inconvenience. And this was way past, I was well into my twenties at this point, right? I would see someone hanging out with somebody else and I would be like, oh, they're not loyal to me anymore. I can't trust them anymore. That's fine. I don't need them anymore. Very, very limited black and white thinking as an adult woman, but approaching friendships from the age of a 15 year old, because at 15, that's how I handled friendships, right? I never learned to navigate relational conflict. I never learned to have conversations. I never learned to share what I was feeling with my friends. It was like, you're either my friend or you're not my friend, black or white. When I started doing the work of processing my emotions, I realized how childish that was. And I realized how much I really needed to step back, right? Look at the anger I was feeling if someone treated me a certain way or if a fr- if I perceived a friendship to be in a certain way, the sadness I was feeling, if I was feeling a disconnection from that friend, I had to do all of this work to step back. And so when I learned to actually sit with the sadness, sit with the disgust, sit with the fear of abandonment and rejection that I was actually feeling and move through and process that, I realized what I was actually needing. And I stopped looking for my friend to give me that thing that I was needing. And I started to realize that my friend is a human being and they have things going on and that I can communicate with them and I can speak with them and I can ask them how they're feeling and I can be okay if they were having an emotional response that I didn't understand. All of that took me developing emotionally, maturing emotionally by actually processing what I was feeling and not seeing things in such a black or white way, right? Getting curious, investigating, understanding that there was more at play. There was more beneath the surface for me to look at. There was a reason this interaction was making me feel a certain way or there was a reason that my friend was behaving or, or feeling a certain way. And there were things that I could do if I wanted to keep that friendship, right? I also learned that I didn't have to maintain friendships that didn't feel aligned with me and that it didn't have to be like, I'm just cutting you off. It had to be with me being honest with myself. It had to do with me being clear about my values, things that as a 15 year old, I didn't really get, right? And so understanding our emotional age is going to impact the patterns that we have, it's going to force us to look at that. We're going to have to look at those patterns. We're going to have to look at our values. We're going to have to really face the things that we don't necessarily want to face, right? And it's going to be uncomfortable work, but it's going to be really important work because on the other side of it, there's wisdom. And on the other side of it, there's seeing the world in a bigger way, in a more aligned way, in a more mature way. And as we chronologically age, Whenever we process our emotions, we allow ourselves to emotionally age. So every time we have a difficult situation come up and we move through those emotions, we process them and we we are conscious about how we approach the situation moving forward or changing our relationship to the past, all of that allows us to age emotionally as well. And we continue to do this as we go along in life. So understanding when we're interacting with somebody who has a younger emotional age is also really important for how we approach that person, right? The way I would try to explain something to a young child is not how I would explain something to uh, a mature adult. But just because somebody's an adult doesn't mean that emotionally they're an adult. And so sometimes we have to meet the person we're interacting with where they're at emotionally in age and not necessarily the age that they're at. And this is a lot of the times contributing to misunderstandings in our relationships, right? Because we're thinking, my expectation is that you're a certain age and that you're going to act in accordance with that age, right? But we don't know the emotional age of that person on the inside, but we can tell based on how they're responding and the things that they're saying and how they're behaving. And that's going to say, huh, okay, I'm not dealing with somebody who I can rational, like be rational with and logical with and speak to as if they're the same emotional age as me. I need to temper my approach. I need to approach it differently. How would I approach somebody younger, right? And so looking at, you know, changing the way that I'm showing up in the interaction can completely change the interaction. And that might help the person to stop and look at themselves. It might not, right? But I found a lot of times that I've walked away from a situation feeling a lot better by approaching it in that way, rather than having this expectation that you're supposed to act this way because you're this age on the calendar and on paper, right? We 
behave the way we are, the age that we are emotionally, right? That's what I really want you to take away from this episode. You, me, all of us, we're going to behave the way that we are, behave the age that we are emotionally. So pay attention to your behavior, look at these clues and see, okay, is this childlike of me? Is this a pattern that I have? Is this pattern serving me? We're constantly supposed to revisit the things we believe and the ways that we behave as we age and we grow and we move through our life. It's not supposed to stay the same. You wouldn't expect a baby to crawl when they're 30. <laughs> you know, you expect them to start to stand and then start to take steps and then walk and then run and then do amazing things. And that is what development is. So remember that just because you turn a new year on the calendar doesn't mean that you've developed fully. And so make sure you're seeking out the right support. Make sure you're learning, you know, how to move through your emotions. I have a book, by the way, it's called Outrunning Your Emotions. The link will be below. That book is going to help you understand the biological and the psychological implications of having emotions, where they come from, why we have them, how we move through them. I give you a chapter on each core emotion, shame, anger, fear, so you can really understand what that emotion is, why it shows up in our lives, all of that. So grab the book. There are other great books out there on, on emotional, you know, maturity development, um, on nonviolent communication, on positive psychology, all these things. But learn, 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 take in new information if you find that the way you're responding to a situation isn't bringing you fulfillment, isn't aligned with where you're at anymore, isn't aligned with the age that you're at anymore, or you're dealing with somebody close to you who maybe is immature emotionally despite their age. Maybe you want to read up on these things so that you can understand a little bit better how to interact with them and navigate a situation with them. You know, my book was written in that way to help you understand how to respond to people who are having difficult emotions, not just understanding your own but it's just understanding emotions as a whole, as humans, and what's natural and what's normal and what's human for us, right? The more we can do that, the more we can develop, the more we can mature, the more we can respond to life in a way where we feel like it's aligned for us, it's aligned with our values, we're in integrity, and it's authentic. And that's ultimately what's going to bring us fulfillment. So with that, I love you guys so much for listening. I'm so excited to be recording again. Sorry for any kind of like drilling that you might have heard. I don't have a studio, so we're doing the best we can. But I will definitely be back in video and audio format for you um, as soon as I can. So with that, I love you so much for listening. See you on the next episode. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. It would mean so much if you could subscribe, leave a review, share with your friends and family, and let me know what you think by going to my Instagram at mighty underscore emotions and connecting with me and letting me know what you loved about today's episode. It really means a lot that you support this podcast and I love coming to you each week with a new episode. So be sure to subscribe, let me know what you think and take care of yourself.